Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I've just recovered from COVID. <clears throat> so I'm gonna be doing a lot of that. For today's book review, we are looking at a book called Bully by Penelope Douglas. It's from the same author who wrote that viral TikTok incestuous step family romance. That is a mouthful. So I, I had very high hopes for this book. It's about a girl falling in love with her abusive tormentor just because he's hot. Right, without further ado, should we get on with it? Like, comment, subscribe. Membership's here. I'm following through, famous last words, on my threat of writing my own, like, <laughs> chapter for chapter parody of Fifty Shades of Grey. No one steal this, it's my idea. I'm calling it 69 Shades of Greys. Christian's an alien. His name's Chad. So be sure to keep your ears and eyes out for that. I'm already bored of doing it because I'm literally just copying 50 Shades of Grey. But that's the joke, you know, because it copied Twilight. Anyway, very meta, I know. I can't do anything non-ironically. Like, I'm literally that clip in The Simpsons. Are you being sarcastic, dude? I don't even know anymore. Let's just get on with it. Let's get it all done in one go. The lie detector determined that was a lie. Oh! Chapter one. The main character is called Tate. She's a girl and is going to a party before she leaves town for a year. Her bully is there and he's called Jared and he hates her even though they used to be best friends as kids. Anyway, she hates him, but he's hot, so. He walked around to the bar and stood right behind me. A nervous heat ran through my body at his proximity. The muscles in his chest rubbed against the thin fabric of my tank top and a shockwave burst from my chest to my stomach. Calm down, calm the hell down. Scooping up some ice and adding it to my drink, I forced my breathing in and out slowly. I maneuvered to the right to get out of his way, but his arm shot out to grab a cup and blocked my passage. As I tried to squeeze out to the left next to KC, spell KC instead of, instead of you know, Casey, anything to be different. His other arm reached out to grab the Jack Daniels. That is one straight out of the Coho playbook. Always block your women and don't let them leave. Tate wants to leave the party, but Jared's friend has thrown her car keys into the pool, so she jumps in to go get them. You have a good time in France, Tatum. Tate is short for Tatum, when we all know it's actually short for potato. I will also accept tantrum instead of Tatum. Go home. No one wants your stuck up ass here. Jared barely spared me eye contact while he continued to deal cards. The girl on his lap giggled and leaned into him further. The crushing sensation in my chest hurt. I hate him. She's obviously jealous because of course she's jealous of the girl who is all over her bully. His friend makes fun of Tate's visibly hardened nipples from the water. I opened my eyes, feeling flushed from everyone visibly entertained by the harassment I'd endured tonight. Jared stared at the table, nostrils flaring, ignoring me. His behaviour still puzzled me after all this time. We used to be friends, and I still searched for that kid in his eyes somewhere. But what good did it do to me to still hang on to a memory of him? A. Jared's weird reaction to this will be proof that he didn't actually really like bullying her. He always was in love with her. B. Why would you bother still searching for that kid in his eyes somewhere? C, is this just mindless drama, mindless fiction, or plain old, just mindless? Anyway, Tate gets mad and punches Jared's friend Maddock in the face. Couldn't just like call him Chad or Max. Chapter two. A year later and Tate is back from Europe. Jared is her next door neighbor. With the tree acting as a ladder between our bedroom windows, it always seemed like the houses were connected in a way. I called it that he uses the tree to get into her room later on. During my year away, I had fought the urge to ask Casey about him. Even after everything he'd done, part of me still missed that boy that was my waking thought and constant companion as a kid. Grow up. She spies Jared through the window and that is the entire chapter. <laughs> Hitchcock did it first and better. I'm never ever gonna see anything interesting with this stupid piece of junk. Oh my God. Chapter three. Jared has a new car that he races with. Tate's friend Casey comes over. Casey is the worst by the way, because you look great. I have no idea what happened between the two of you, but he won't be able to ignore you. No room or prank will keep the guys away and Jared will probably be sulking that he treated you so badly. Casey wiggled her eyebrows. 
Ah yes, plain girls only have worth once they become attractive. I know that trope well. Casey grabbed my hand. No worries, babe. This shit has to come to a head eventually. After all, we graduate in nine months. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the foreplay between you and Jared. Casey chirped straight faced as she hopped off the bed and into my closet. It can't go on forever, she called out. Foreplay? The MC's best friend just thinks his bullying is a form of endearment to her, even though it's socially isolated her from everyone else and it makes her panic whenever she like goes outside and like when she went to the party, she, there's lots that I did include because I was just trying to get through this. When she goes to the party, she has like these lifelines to make sure that she can just get out of any given situation and escape in case Jared bull bullies her. Like he's done some severe psychological damage and trauma to this girl. And it's so minimized, it's crazy. You think his treatment of me is foreplay? I almost yelled at her. Yes, it was foreplay when he told the whole school I had irritable bowel syndrome and everyone made farting noises. Am I a bully? As I walked down the hall freshman year, my sarcastic tone failed to cover up my anger. How could she think this was all foreplay? And yes, it was completely erotic the way he had the grocery store deliver a case of yeast infection cream to math class so for more year. But what really got me hot and ready to bend over for him was when he plastered brochures for genital wart treatments on my locker, which is completely outrageous for someone to have an STD without having sex. Yikes. He's just an abusive dick. Tate, Guys aren't mean to attractive girls for no reason at all. In fact, most teenage guys' energy is for the sole purpose of giving laid. They don't want to diminish their options, so they rarely are mad at any girl unless she's betrayed him, of course, she mused. What? Huh? Tate insists that she didn't do anything to Jared. They were friends and then after one summer he spent with his dad for a few weeks, he came back hating her. Tate's mum died years ago and her dad is conveniently away for work so she's left home alone for three months straight and I will say that the book reads like Wattpad and I refuse to embellish more. Chapter four. Jared is having a party next door. Inside the house the carousing carousing was loud and obnoxious. People danced in the living room or rather some slutty looking girls let themselves get dry humped. It's one of these books in it. Funny how it's never some slutty looking boys, dry humped girls, is it? More than a few girls wanted Maddox's attention, but I wasn't one of them. He was good looking with his bright blue eyes and styled blonde hair. Styled blonde hair isn't a description of anything. He had a great body and his clothes complemented his form. However, I doubted he ever used girls for longer than one night. Not gonna call him a slut though, are you? Though Maddock the slut does have a nice ring to it and hereafter he shall be forever known as Maddock the slut. So Tate made sure that we knew that she was disheveled with no makeup, hair messy and pajamas. She's one of those girls. Doesn't know how to use makeup properly, but it's just drop dead gorgeous. I probably doesn't have a skincare routine or like a nighttime bed routine, but she's just drop dead gorgeous. They exist apparently. I turn to leave. <laughs> and continued my search, but he grabbed me at the elbow. Actually, I'm a glutton for punishment, but you do look fucking fantastic in your pajamas. If you're looking for some action, I can take care of you. Still totally doable to the handsome jock bully though. Hey man, Jared says she's off limits. Sam Parker, while Jared's nicer cronies chimed in from the table. Tate isn't a thing that's on or off limits though. According to the book, she is, so what do I know? Maddox says Jared is shagging some other girl, so Tate gets jealous without realizing. Maddox jerked me backwards into his body and wrapped his arms around me. I briefly registered Sam bolting out of his seat and out of the room. My body twisted and my muscles tensed, but I held off on any serious struggling for the time being. I wanted to see Jared and hopefully that's where Sam went. If I could get out of here without major drama, I'd prefer it that way. I would argue that the drama is currently happening, but also, you smell good, he whispered. Keep fighting me, Tate. It turns me on. His snort was followed by his tongue darting out and licking my earlobe before grabbing it between his teeth. By the way, they become friends at the end. Tate grabs Maddox's crotch and squeezes him until he lets go. Maddox raises an eyebrow. You're probably still a virgin, aren't you? He took me off guard. Guy sure wanted to fuck you, but Jared and I took care of that. What the hell is it between you and Jared anyway? I mean, when I first met him... <sighs> Get ready for the exposition dump. 
and he wrangled me into sabotaging all your dates freshman year. I assumed it was because he had a thing for you, like he was jealous or something. But then after a while, it was pretty clear he wasn't pursuing you for some reason. What did you do to him? Maddox looked at me accusingly, cocking his head to the side. It's so predictable, but also so blah. We haven't spent enough time with Jared being a bully to be that invested in any of this. Think, Maddox goaded with a cocky smirk. You're gorgeous. And speaking for myself, I'd have screwed you every which way by now. A lot of guys would have if not for Jared, please. It's simple. Every time we'd get word that someone was interested in you or had asked you out, we'd set out to make sure it ended as quickly as it started. We were pretty lame about it for the first few months. Todd Branch asked you to that bonfire freshman year, but he heard you were receiving lice treatment and never called you. You never wondered how he heard that? Daniel Stewart asked you out for- Who asked? Asked you out for the Halloween dance that year too, but never picked you up because he heard you had lost your virginity to Steve Stoddard. Maddock barely finished the last word. He was laughing so hard. I grimaced uncontrollably as heat rose up my neck. Stephen Stoddard was an incredibly sweet kid, but he suffered from serious acne and ate his boogers. Every school had a Stevie Stoddard. Maddock continued. Yeah, we were pretty busy at first. A lot of guys wanted to get in your pants, but by sophomore year, our rumours got more sophisticated. People had pretty much caught on that you were a social leper. Things got easier for me and Jared. Finally. I can't wait for all of that to be justified. And it is. Jared appears. Even my resentment towards Jared, I couldn't look away from the way his muscles in his smooth chest stretched with his arms. My body involuntarily reacted as heat gathered below my belly and steam moved up my neck. I'd been in France for a year and seeing him again up close sent my stomach into a double back handspring. She just heard that Jared did his very best to make her a social outcast and completely unbangable. And all of that goes out of the window when she sees him because he's got chest muscles. Hmm. His dark brown hair and eyes seem to make his skin glow. The severe straight eyebrows enhanced his forbidding presence. Looking at him would should be a sport. Whoever pulled their eyes away from him the soonest won. He stood half naked, wearing only a pair of black pants featuring a wallet chain hanging from his pocket. Do people still wear those? His skin was tanned and his hair was shamelessly mussed. His two tattoos blazed, one on the upper arm and the other on the side of his torso. His blue and white checkered boxers peeked out the top of his pants, which hung loose due to the unfastened belt looped around his waist. Unfastened. I closed my eyes. Shut up! I have guests, Jared repeated, fixing me with an annoyed stare. Yes, I can tell. I peered around him to the doorway where the brunette stood. You can get back to servicing them in just a minute. Jared's expression fell to a slight scowl. The brunette finally took the hint, walked over to Jared, whose eyes never left mine, and kissed him on the cheek. Call me, she whispered. His glare stayed on me as he continued to ignore her. After a few moments' hesitation, she backed out of the room, twisted on her heel, and left. No wonder guys acted like jerks. Girls like that, let them. <sighs> Blaming women for the actions of men like a true pick-me. She asks him to keep the noise down, he refuses. I like my parties, Tatum. He shrugged his shoulders. I like to be entertained. If you take my party, then you have to entertain me. His hooded gaze and husky voice were probably meant to be sexy, but it only came off as threatening. And what disgusting task, pray tell, would you like me to do? I lavishly waved my hand through the air as if talking to a duke or lord. Maybe the jerk off wanted his toilets cleaned or socks folded. Either way, he was only going to get my middle finger pointed in his face. Sauntering over to me, Jared grabbed the hem of my hoodie and said, take this off and give me a lap dance embarrassing. Tate instead starts screaming that the cops are coming so the party breaks up. Do you know what this is? I took my middle finger and patted the corner of my eye of it. It's me wiping away the last tear you'll ever get. I bet that sounded better in her head. Chapter 5. Tate is in school and everyone is talking about her positively now because she's hot or something. It's great to have you back. Ben whispered as we walked into class, me first and him close behind. I widened my eyes and had to stifle a nervous laugh. The reality of Ben Jameson engaging me in small talk was too surreal. He starred on the football and basketball teams and was one of the best looking guys in the school. We had been in French one and two together, but he'd never spoken to me. This sure is some wish fulfillment. Then Maddox the slut comes to hassle her. Tate, I know you can hear me. In fact, I know every part of you is very aware of me right now. Maddox ran the knuckles of his left hand down my arm. I sucked in a breath and my body jerked at his touch. Mmm, you've got goosebumps. You see? He toyed with me. Goosebumps? If I weren't so sickened, I would laugh. Yes, you do make my skin crawl, but you knew that, right? My disdain couldn't get any thicker. I really missed you last year, and I would actually like to call a truce. In fact, why don't we put everything behind us and you let me take you out this weekend? 
He had to be dreaming if he thought. His hand glided down my back and quickly descended to my rear. I sucked in another breath. Son of a bitch. Did he just really grab my ass without my permission? In public? Oh no. Then he squeezed. Okay. Tate knees Maddox the slut in the groin. Fair enough. Jared had been threatening for years, but he had never crossed that line. He had never touched me or made me feel physically violated. Psychological abuse is fine though. Like, sorry, this is kind of the bare minimum that a boy doesn't touch you without your consent. And I don't know why Jared should be compared to Maddox in a kind of low key celebratory way, just because he's not tried to grope or rape her. Pardon? Jared's full attention was focused on me and my and the world and my peripheral vision stopped as we stared at each other. There was a time when I had all of his attention and loved it. As much as I wanted him to leave me alone, I also liked how he seemed surprised. I liked the way he was looking at me right now. And then I remembered that I hated him. Huh? Chapter six. Girls now like Tate because she need Maddock in the balls and Jared lied to the Dean about how Maddock got hurt. No, 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 they did not save my ass. Caving, I took a seat on the bench in the middle of the aisle and planted my head in my hands. What's wrong? This is good news. She took a seat next to me and began removing her shoes and socks. No, I think I'd rather be in trouble with the Dean than indebted to those jerks. They won't have covered for me unless they wanted to administer the punishment themselves. This is so melodramatic. Tate does PE and showers afterwards and then Jared just comes barging into the girls' changing rooms. A chill ran over my body. His eyes were on me as he spoke to everyone else and it made me disgusted with my sex to see how everyone scurried away, leaving me alone with a boy who had no right to be in there. Again, with the random misogyny, Penelope, are you good? I clutched the towel at the top of my breast with one hand and hugged myself with the other. All of my important parts were covered, but the towel rode up just under my butt, leaving most of my legs exposed. Jared narrowed his eyes at me before they began to fall downward and kept going. My mind swirled and my face flushed with heat as he continued checking me out. His intimidation tactics were stellar. No smirk accompanied his violation. He didn't eye fuck me like Maddox did. His roaming gaze was reluctant, as if it was involuntary. His chest heaved slightly and his breathing got heavier. Tingles covered my body and another sensation... I was a little pissed off about settled between my legs. So of course this idiot starts getting horny over the violation of privacy. When she just said, oh, well, at least Jared never violated me in that way. Like in the previous chapter. Okay. In an instant, he pushed off the lockers and invaded my space. Walking up to me, he placed his hands against the locker doors on both sides of my head with his eyes glaring down at me. I suddenly forgot how to breathe. If you forget for a little while longer, this book will end, which will be a blessing. I met his eyes and breathed him in. There was something I was going to say, but I completely forgot it as his scent invaded my brain. I liked it when men walk alone, but Jared didn't wear any. Good. Awesome. The jerk just smelled like soap. Yummy, delicious, musky body wash. Are we really just romanticising bullying and body wash now? <laughs> the coach interrupts them. A few of the girls had their phones out and I cringed at the sound of pictures being taken. No. Is everyone in this book just nasty? Is this just mean girls, but without like the comedy. Jess exited the coach's office as I made my way in that direction. Hey, she stopped me. I talked to coach and she knows Jared ambushed you in there, that he wasn't invited. I'm sorry I abandoned you like that. Thanks, relief flooded me. At least my butt was safe from coach's wrath. No problem. Just please don't tell anyone I spoke up for you. If people knew I got Jared in trouble, it wouldn't be good, Jess explained. Are you scared of him? Jared had a lot of power around the school. No, she shook her head. Jared's fine. He can be a jerk if he's provoked, but he's never concerned me. Honestly, it seems like you're the only one he wants to beat down, metaphorically speaking. Yeah, he's fine. It's okay that he abuses and outcasts Tate. As long as he doesn't actually hit her, who cares? Chapter seven. Everyone is gossiping about Tate and Jared. I'd been called a bitch before and it didn't hurt the way being called a slut did. Being a bitch could be a survival technique. They get respect. There was no honour in people thinking you were a slut. The honourable slut is like the noble savage, but slutty. Jared was bold. He wanted me to know that he remembered Bruce Willis was my favourite actor. We had watched Die Hard one day when my father was gone because dad wouldn't let me see it due to all the swearing. Jared had a lot of knowledge about me and I resented that. And he didn't have the right to claim any part of me. All of that will go out the window when she inevitably sleeps with him. Also, so far... Like, all you've told us is he knows that you like Bruce Willis, which is hardly the most intimate of secrets, is it? It's not the same as knowing your mum's maiden name or your first pet's name and then using those details to hack into your bank account, is it? 
Tate and Jared are sharing a film studies class and predictably they get paired up with Jared for a project. Does that even go anywhere? I don't think that actually goes anywhere. Chapter eight. Tate is at home waiting for KC. I thought they said KFC then. I'm hungry. Can't eat KFC anyway. Hmm. Hey, Casey breathed, stepping into the house with her arms loaded down. What the hell? We were just doing my ma- my hair, not a makeover. My eyes watered at her perfume. What's that scent you're wearing? Oh, it's new. It's called Secret. You like? Love it. Don't loan it to me. I'm not convinced that she actually likes her friend. Probably because her friend is a woman. As she started brushing the syrupy mixture into my hair, my eyes darted to Jared, who was now pulling his shirt over his head. His amazingly toned arms were put to shame when he turned around and I saw his chiseled torso. My mouth went dry and chills shot out like needles all over my body. It was the breeze. It was totally the breeze. Guys, I think this book is pro-bullying. It's giving, if he pulls your pigtails, it's because he likes you, so you have to tolerate him. You have Liam, remember? It bugged me that she was drooling over Jared, even if it was jokingly. He was beautiful, but it did need to be pointed out like that actually mattered. His personality sucked. Give yourself that advice, please. Mmm, she devoured Jared with her eyes as she backed up to my hair. I hate to say it, but I wonder what it'd be like to have him. KC, stop it, you're my friend, I scolded. I'm sorry, okay? It's just that he wasn't that bad when you were gone. Honestly, he wasn't the hellraiser he was before you left. What do you mean? I don't know. I don't even know if I had anything to do with you. He seemed moodier for a while, but then it got better. It's just that I got to see him with different eyes. Before, it was always about how he treated you, which was horrible, she rushed to add. But after you left, he seemed different, more human. What a shit friend. I would secretly hate her too, and not even because she's a woman. In fact, I think I'd publicly hate her. I hadn't seen him happy in years, and I thought for sure he'd be pleased as punch to get rid of me for a year. But why had he acted moodier after I left? It didn't make sense. This is so contrived, it's unreal. Chapter nine. Tate is being kept awake by yet another weekend party at Jared's, so she sneaks in and turns off the circuit breaker and padlocks it so Jared can't get into it. It's the way that all of that takes about less than a page, but if someone like Stephen King rewrote it, it would take at least 10 pages. I'm just trying to say there's an awful lot of telling not showing. I scanned the front and backyards and thankfully saw a few people headed out to their cars. I grimaced as I thought that maybe putting drunken people on the road wasn't the smartest idea. Why are so many American authors flippant about drink driving? Not even authors. It happens in Gilmore Girls. Colin Hoover thinks it's a, like fine. And now it's just mentioned here. It's a bit weird. Someone then breaks into Tate's house. Chapter 10. My body instantly reacted at the sight of shirtless Jared rounding the corner into my foyer and flying up the stairs. He was definitely pissed and primed for murder with the way that he charged up the staircase, taking two at a time. Breaking and entering is fine as long as someone's hot. Oh no, you don't. Jared burst my bedroom door and the doorknob slammed against the wall, probably denting it. It's not abusive, it's sexy. I love that she's more worried about the hole in the wall, which incidentally, if his anger is anything to go by, she'll be seeing plenty more of those. There was no way I'd make it out of the doors on time. I spun round to face him, raising the bat. Jared yanked it out of my hands before I even got primed for a swing. Get out, are you crazy? I started to veer around him, trying to get back into my bedroom door, but he cut me off. I was surprised he wasn't strangling me, judging by the look on his face. Very sexy. You cut the electricity to my house. His nostrils flared as he got an inch from my face and stared me down. Not a dangerous male at all. Jared has a key to her house because... Tate's dad gave it to him to collect their mail whilst they were away. Your dad trusts me, Jared continued. He shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. He advanced on me until I was forced back against the French doors. You're a nosy bitch, Tatum. Keep your ass on your own side of the fence. Very romantic. I looked anywhere but in his eyes. The burning lantern tattoo on his arm was in all black and greys. I wonder what it meant. His arms were tight with tension. At least I hoped they weren't normally that rigid. The other tattoo on the side of his torso was in script lettering and impossible to read in this light. His skin looked smooth and the air left my lungs as I tried to ignore the tingling sensation in my core. It's best just to look him in the eye. We hadn't been this close to each other in a long time and we'd been nose to nose a lot since my return. So of course she gets horny over this psycho coming into her house. Because the rumour you started this week, not a chance. My voice was even, but a smug smile threatened to break out. I was getting off on our confrontation and the realisation that things between us were finally coming to a head, as Casey had said. Look at us already. Jared and I hadn't been alone in my room in over three years. This was progress. Of course he was uninvited, but I wasn't going to nitpick. What? Jared says they weren't even friends anyway and Tate was just clingy so she's all I hate you and he's like good. 
because it's been a long time since I could stand the sight of you. He slammed his palm against the wall near my head, causing me to jump. That's not at all abusive. Flinching, I screamed to myself, what had happened to us? He'd scared me, but I stood my ground, telling myself he wasn't going to hurt me, not physically. I knew that. Didn't I? Jesus Christ. The cops turn up so Jared leaves, chapter 11. Tate is chilling at home when Casey arrives and says that Liam, her boyfriend, has been cheating on her. Jared had taken Casey to go surprise Liam at the racetrack. Oh, was she seriously that stupid? That didn't seem a little convenient to you. Why do you hate your friend so much? Also, yeah, it's so convenient that her boyfriend cheated on her. Yeah, she almost whispered. I'd gotten out of Jared's car. He picked me up since you can only enter by invitation and we circulated looking for Liam. I saw him leaning against his car with a really sexy looking girl in super slutty clothes. They were kissing and he had his hands all over her. There was no mistake. Her chin started wobbling and her eyes filled with tears again so I dug in her bag for more tissues. She continued. We got into it and that girl rubbed it in that they'd been hooking up for months. Months. I'm sick to my stomach. All women are demons apparently except for Tate. Two things could be safely assumed though. Jared probably knew Liam was cheating for a while but didn't interfere until now and Casey's breakup with Liam served a purpose in his trying to antagonise me. How did she just make someone's breakup about herself? Hmm. Well, I hate to ask a silly question but how was the race? Did Liam win? He probably hadn't raced. Another ploy on Jared's part to get her to the loop. We stayed for a while but Jared raced, not Liam. Exactly. How come? It might have been nice for you to see his ass left choking in the dust. I tried to sound like I was just lightening her mood, but really I wanted information. Oh, it turns out he wasn't racing last night. Jared misunderstood. She waved it off. Complete setup. Why does that matter? Are you going to be okay? The end of a two year relationship by the time you're 17 was going to take some time to get over. Took me a week. After Casey leaves, Tate hears Jared's dog, Madman, who she also loves. I found a small hole to peer. Okay, Snoop through. Jared entered my vision and I flinched, remembering our last encounter. Flinching from seeing someone is definitely a good thing. As my heart tugged at the rare scene of Jared actually looking human, my eyes snapped to his naked back and the faded scars marring his skin. Funny, I didn't see the other night when he was shirtless in my room, but the light was so dim, I guess I just missed it. Scattered in no particular pattern were welts, about five or so, covering his muscular and otherwise smooth back. He didn't have them when we were kids. I tried to remember if I heard about him getting injured. I came up with nothing. So he clearly went through something traumatic and then decided to bully Tate as an outlet and this trauma will miraculously absolve Jared of all of his crimes once revealed. That's basically what happened. This week's book review is brought to you by the letter F for formulaic. Son of a bitch. Why did it always take me a second or two to remember why I hated him? His shiny brown hair was a mess. I loved that. His chocolate eyes glowed with confidence and mischief. I loved that. His toned arms and chest just made me wonder what his skin felt like. I loved that. He made me forget how awful he was. I hated that. <sighs> also, Jared's mum is an alcoholic currently sober for whatever relevance that will be later on. Chapter 12. So why haven't I seen you in the two weeks I've been home? I asked Catherine after we discussed my trip and plans for senior year. She poured more coffee for herself. Well, I met someone... Oh yeah, this is Jared's mum who like invites her in. She poured some more coffee for herself. Well, I met someone a few months ago and I stay with him a lot. I raised my eyebrows in surprise and she must have seen it. She shook her head and gave me a contrite smile. I guess it sounds bad, she offered, me leaving Jared alone so much. Between my job, his school and job, and then all of the things he's involved in, we just don't run into each other a lot. I figure he's happier on his own more. I'm well, great parenting. Since I'd lived on the street eight years now, m Jared's mum had had a drinking problem. Most of the time she'd been functional, able to go to work and handle Jared. After he came back from visiting his dad that summer three years ago, he changed and Jared's mum had sought escape in the bottle more often. Nothing traumatic to see here, folks. Some adults might see her reasoning as logical, since Jared was almost an adult, but I let my judgment form. As much as I liked her, I blamed her for a lot of Jared's unhappiness growing up. I didn't know the whole story, but I'd heard enough to figure out that Jared's father wasn't a good man. He had left when Jared was two, before I even lived in the neighbourhood. Catherine raised her son almost completely alone, but she had developed a drinking problem during her marriage. When Jared was 14, his father called and asked if Jared could come stay and visit him for the summer. Happily, Jared agreed and left for eight weeks. After the visit, though, he returned cold and cruel. His mother's problem got worse and he was utterly alone. I'd always known, deep down, that Jared's problem with me was tied to that summer. The truth was I resented Catherine, and even though I'd never met Jared's father, I resented him, too. I would take responsibility if I'd hurt Jared, but I had no idea what I could have done to deserve his hatred. His parents, on the other hand, had clearly abandoned him. Yes, the mother who raised Jared completely alone abandoned him. <laughs> 
The next day, Casey tells Tate that Jared has been texting her. He wanted to make sure I was okay. See, he is not all bad. This person really, really isn't a good friend if one text is enough to wipe away years of abuse. Oh, not much. Other than you cut the electricity to his house? She laughed it off, but I could tell she wasn't as amused as I thought she'd be. Maybe she was pissed that I didn't tell her myself. Um, yeah, I was fighting for words. Jared complained about me to her? The arsehole's party was too loud, so I shut it down. I cleared my throat. It didn't sound as good saying it out loud. We took our seats at a picnic table and began digging into our food. She stayed quiet, but I caught her glancing at me between bites. What? I asked, annoyed. You told me to play the game, remember? Did you at least ask him to turn it down first? No. It came out more like a squeaky question. Well, yes, on a different occasion I did. I started to feel like I was on trial. And how'd that turn out? She paused, water bottle in hand. Well, he wasn't cooperating, so I incited a panic and yelled cops. People kind of left after that. I tipped my head back and gulped some water to keep from meeting her eyes. I was still proud of that night, but Casey clearly didn't find it funny. It's the way that Casey has so, so, so easily turned Team Jared after one text exchange. Maybe Penelope is right and women ain't shit. All I'm saying is that Jared has talked to you. Her voice was calm, the opposite of mine. That's it. You look like the bully now. You've broken up two of his parties, broken his friend's nose and need that same friend in the balls. This is crazy. This is absolute crazy mental gymnastics. He's not telling the whole story, I sputtered. He broke into the girl's locker room while I was getting dressed. Casey frowned, looking confused. He just talked to you though, right? He didn't touch you? That's even crazier. Casey isn't convinced that Jared is a bad guy and is willing to risk her friendship over it. Why do authors write women doing so much for awful men? Tate gets asked out on a date by a boy called Ben, so she agrees, but she's not that excited by it. We ate enchiladas and he jokes that if they made a Mexican sushi restaurant, he would never eat anywhere else again. Even though I wasn't a fan of sushi, I snorted at the hilarious concept. It's funny how Tate is actually really quite judgmental, but she finds that funny. Honestly, I've been wanting to for a long time. I never had the guts though. You're kind of on my bucket list. I wasn't sure whether that was a compliment or an insult. How do you mean? This date might be ending sooner rather than later. You know, one of those I simply must do this before I die type lists. I needed to get you to know you better. I was always interested. Then when you came back from Europe and I saw you the first day of school, I just couldn't get you out of my head. So you've been scared away by rumours all these years? What a coward, I chastised sarcastically. What surprised me was that the barb came out my lips so easily. I wasn't nervous around him and my shoulders relaxed. It nipped to the back of my mind that also meant that I didn't care what he thought either. See, she's just not like that nice of a person. They kiss. I placed my hands on his chest as he wrapped his arms around me and he didn't try to force his tongue into my mouth. It was safe, comfortable, definitely not what it should be. I hadn't experienced any of the thrill Casey talked about when being close to a guy you're attracted to. Definitely not the kind of excitement that I read about in the books about high school girls and fallen angels. Is that a Twilight reference? And not the kind of pulsing heat I feel when I'm around. No, no. So she hates kissing him because he's not a douchebag. Tate wants to see Casey but gets fobbed off with an I'm working later, but then spies her and Jared hanging out. It's the way he hooks up with her best friend and then gets with Tate later on. That is delicious. Needles dug under the surface of my skin and my ears were ringing. My throat ached as I fought back tears. He had won over Casey. Casey had lied about working late. She had her arms around him. I wasn't sure which one I was most upset about. But of course, it's not that her best friend is hanging out with someone who abused her that's got her so, so upset. She's more upset that she's hanging out with the dude she secretly fancies. Get a life. Or... Just admit that you fancy the guy. Shit or get off the pot. Chapter 13. What was she thinking? Even if Jared had smooth talked her, was it worth hurting her best friend over? Well, all women are terrible. Back home, Jared gets into a fight with two strangers. It was hard to catch my breath all of a sudden. Their arguments seemed to be getting out of control. Should I call the cops? As much as they pushed into his space, Jared didn't retreat. The odds were against him though. Shit, Jared, just get out of there. One of the men pushed and I flinched. Like, why'd you care? Get a life. So Tate runs outside with her father's gun and Jared gets cut with a knife, but he wins the fight and smashes up the stranger's car. Boy, that escalated quickly. I don't think this has ever explained why this happened. A little too late, I realised I was standing with a gun in the open, in my underwear. My three days grace t-shirt and red boy shorts covered me, but they were tight. Do we have a different definition of underwear? Because I would call this just wearing clothes. Anyway, nothing happens. Chapter 14. Tate's grandma comes to stay for a few days. Tate also catches Jared and Casey kissing. Such a bad friend. That bitch. Wait, what? 
I should be mad at him, if not more so than KC, then at least equally. Jared had pursued her, and I knew with all certainty that it was to hurt me. Why did I want her off of him instead of him off of her? <sighs> I don't think she ever confronts him about this either. Like, properly at the end when they're a couple. Anyway, they snog and Tate just stares at them breathlessly. Hey, ma'am. I heard Maddox's voice as he barged through the cafeteria doors. Was that KC that ran off? You haven't tapped that yet? Jared exhaled as a small laugh as their footsteps came closer. Who's saying I haven't? I swallowed hard. Uh, because you've never been seen with a girl after you fucked her. I doubt you even wait until the condom's off before forgetting their names. What a catch. Tate's gonna be pissed. Maddox's voice sounded amused and I wanted to run it here in my name. The whole point, Jared stated flatly. Oh, so that's the plan. Maddox nodded, finally understanding the end game. My throat tightened, my mouth went dry. He knew she was my best friend, my only friend pretty much, and losing her would make me miserable. The tightness spread to my jaw and I shook my head in disgust. He hated me that much. Like, it's so embarrassing that he did this. And then, like, they never have a discussion about it when they become a couple. Like, yeah, why did you try and bang my best friend? So weird. Maddox tells Jared that Ben took Tate out for a date and Jared is all, I don't care, go away. And Tate runs off and cries in a toilet. Jared indulged in my misery like it was candy. He had fed me to the wolves time and time again, reveling in the unhappiness he caused. Jared, my friend, was completely gone, leaving a cold monster in his place. I mean, this isn't going to last long, is it? His last words also irked me. He was setting me free, allowing me to date. The nerve. In my sick, twisted attachment to the boy who used to be my friend, I still took some comfort in the attention he showed me. Even if it was negative attention, at least he acknowledged my existence in some way. Maybe if he still took the trouble to cross my path, then he might be holding a piece of me with him too. But he was done, as he'd said. What? Tate confronts Casey. Tell me what, that you're screwing the guy that hurts me? That you two are laughing behind my back? My voice cracked, but I was grateful that I hadn't started yelling. It's not like that. I knew she didn't want to hurt me, but I couldn't just listen to it. There was no excuse. The heat of anger clouded my reason. I was mad and I wanted her to feel as mad as me. This is how bullies are made. <laughs> so corny i thought but it still felt good to lash out and i didn't want to stop that is not how bullies are made bullies are made by crossbreeding men and orcs and growing them in mud sacks in the ground wait no that's urukai not bullies easy mistake to make tate tells casey that jared and maddock have been sabotaging every potential date and started all the rumors about her and casey just decides to not believe it Jared's pleasure would come from me starting a fight with my best friend over my hatred of him or her involvement with him. The painful lump in my throat got bigger. I wanted to calm down and fix this, but it took every ounce of reason I had to not walk away. She'd betrayed me, but she'd also stuck with me through everything. I owed it to her to not run away at the first sign of trouble. You absolute fucking pushover. Pathetic. Pathetic! Weak! Casey looked me in the eye. And we're friends. That will never change. Still mad as hell at her, I exhaled the breath I'd been holding. Is it worth it? I asked. Dating him when you know I hate him? Why was this so important? Did he really mean anything to her? She offered a tight smile, eyes downcast. He deserved how you feel about him, but what good has it done you to carry around this hatred? Awful logic. Awful person. Tate should just move. Anyway, they stay friends. What the hell is wrong with you people? Chapter 15. Tate gets asked out by yet another boy because she's so hot, doesn't even realise that. I don't get you. Nope, as I said, too stupid. You give it to Trent in the locker room last week and then you let Jameson take you out. You probably gave it up for him too. He leaned in further and ran his hand up my arm. Why is every boy in this book the worst? It is cartoon levels of villainy. Jared then threatens the boy. As usual, Jared gave the impression that he could take on an army all by himself. This is very alpha male coded and I don't find it attractive, but who cares what I think? <laughs> I don't even care what I think. I let out a bit of sigh. How dare he try to troubleshoot a problem he created. They all, at one time or another, had thought I was a slut because of him. Isn't this what he wanted? Isn't me being harassed and uncomfortable the goal of his bullying? Sick of his torment and games, I forced down the urge of my twitching fist to hit them. <laughs> Stow your twitching palm, Mr. Cray. <laughs> it was then that I realised I wanted to hurt Jared. Really hurt him. I hate you. My emotions fell into a relaxed lividness. Don't do me any favours. I bit out, meeting his eyes. The satisfaction of hurting him for once would feel fucking great. You're a miserable piece of shit, Jared. But then, I guess I'd be miserable too if my parents hated me. Your dad left you and your mum avoid you. But who can blame them, right? Jared flinched and I immediately felt my insides shake. What was I doing? This wasn't me. Bile rose in my throat. What did I just say to him? I waited for the satisfaction to come. 
but it never did. She is such a spineless flip-flopper. He remained silent, his eyes narrowed on me with a hint with a hint, rage and despair. Proofreading. Don't exist. There was no way I could erase what I'd just done to him. <laughs> Even though he had his emotions, I'd seen the cringe. Yeah, I can see rage in the cringe. This is how bullies are made. Yes. And <laughs> I don't like this theme that reacting to people abusing you also makes you a bully. It's not like Tate is taking out her frustrations on some random dork. She's taking it out on the guy that is vile to her and I see nothing morally or ethically wrong with that. Hmm. For class, she pairs up with Ben and they have to share a favourite memory of each other. Which, what what kind of class is this? <laughs> Like, how old are they? Are they, like, in reception or something? Tate's favourite memory is she was too scared to visit her mum's grave at a cemetery. So Jared packed a picnic and took her there. And this all contrived to make us think, oh, Jared's a good guy. Why is Tate being so mean to him? Huh. <laughs> she had a favourite memory of each other. They're all 17. This is not a real class. Liam meets up with Tate and tells her that she's been trying. he's been trying to see KC, but KC ignores him. And Tate is all, oh my god, OMG, oh my god, OMG, KC said Liam wasn't attempting to contact her. She's not honest anymore. Like, duh. Didn't you realise that in the last chapter? Anyway, here's the thing. Random PSA. Enjoy dark romance. Enjoy what the hell this is. I don't care. But do not be lying on Reddit saying this stuff is well written. Because it's just not. Colleen Hoover, not well written. This, not well written. Do you know what I've been listening to? Okay, I've been reading, rereading Crime and Punishment because, oh my God, I love a 19th century Russian author. They're so melodramatic and for what? Like on the first page, it says something like, like the streets were filthy with people's wretched misery. Like, are you okay, Dr. Oyeski? Do you need a hug? Probably. And I've been listening to the audiobook of Lord of the Rings, narrated by Andy Serkis. Um, wow, there's a lot of singing. Kind of forgot that when I read it all those years ago, huh? But w when you go from like reading this like bad Wattpad S stuff and then listening to, I don't know, actual good literature, it's the, the comparison is crazy. The difference is stark. Yeah, enjoy it though. Enjoy this, but don't be lying saying that, oh, well, it's it's like good storytelling. It's not. Why did you cheat? Running his hands for his dark hair, he leaned back against the truck. Because I could. <laughs> <laughs> kind of love that for him. Not going to lie. Bold. Bold statement. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Apparently, no, not apparently. At the end, they do get back together. FYI, Kate c and liam so have a nice life casey with someone knowing that they will cheat on you just because they can do you know what that's her calm of getting with jared hmm. liam i need to go home i'll tell casey that you'd like to talk to her but i can't be on your side about this if you deserve it she'll forgive you personally i wasn't sure if i'd ever forgive him if i were her i'm sorry i didn't mean to wrangle you into this yes you did i joked reluctantly at heart i didn't believe liam was a bad guy he messed up though, and I wasn't sure if it was worth the risk to forgive him. Cheating on someone for months is not a single mistake. I don't know who needs to hear that, but it's true. Chapter 16. Tate sees her grandma, and I selfishly needed her to remind me that I was a good person. After what I'd said to Jared today, I didn't even want to face myself in the mirror. Get a life, God. Try being in England. Oh my God, my new favourite thing is these TikTokers. What are their names? Like Marley and Archie. I don't know. They do this series of like interactions in the UK and it's just my new favorite thing because it's just so, when, when I say in these videos that every time I have to leave this house to go for the, to the shops, I'm fighting for my life. They perfectly encapsulate, like they're not even exaggerating. It's an accurate representation of what it's like to just interact with the public in England. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what a prick. You what, mate? Huh? What the fuck did you just call me? I was just talking to my friend. Yeah, and I'm not about to do something despicable. What is wrong with you? It's the way that like, oh, she thinks she's so edgy and so mean for saying your parents hated you. Or she wouldn't last five seconds in England. I walk out the door and a random stranger would tell me that my parents hate me. And you know what? I'm not going to pretend I'm any better. 
The moment I see someone acting up in public, being an attention seeker, I'm thinking, my God, your parents hate you, don't they? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> like, what's so funny about that TikTok series is it's it's hilarious because, like, like, it's the English urge to be half of those people that they're making fun of. It's the way the defence mechanism kicks in if anyone approaches you in England for you to just turn and start snarling like a Rottweiler. I'm not unhinged. Anyway, already feeling a bit lighter, I bounced off my chair to help out with dinner. My grandma put together a salad, pasta and sautéed mushrooms. I made my mouth-watering garlic bread, which was about the only thing I actually baked in the oven. The rest of my diet usually included whatever could be cooked in the microwave. She set the table up in the back patio and I put on some ambient music, which was common ground for both of us. Well written, my ass. This is just, I did this, then this, then this, the novel. This is what I mean by like, Wattpad tear, like bad Wattpad tear. And this is the first time that she's mentioned her garlic bread, my mouth watering garlic bread. But the way that it's written kind of insinuates that we should be familiar with it, but it's the first we've heard of it. And there's no other description. We have no idea what makes it so mouth-watering. Does she make a garlic confit and use that? Does she use 50 bulbs of garlic? Fresh herbs? Homemade butter? No clue. We just have to take her word for it. Anyway, Penelope Douglas has written almost 50 books. I can completely see how. Her grandma reminisces about how Jared and Tate obviously liked each other as kids. Of course, I had no idea how my grandma knew about that. From as early as our friendship as I can remember, Jared would climb through the tree between our bedrooms and sneak through my French doors. When I'm right, I'm right. Have you ever talked to him like I suggested? She inquired before starting her salad. Grandma, don't even care to try. We were friends once. Now we're not. My heart's not breaking over it. I lied. Tate, I know it hurts. He's been an ass to you. Really? I couldn't care less. And even if it did hurt, I certainly, certainly wouldn't let him see him. He's done horrible things to me. And if my tears are what he needs to get off, then he can suffer. He doesn't deserve my attention. My grandma put her fork down, uneaten salad, dipping into the pasta. Tatum, that's your mother talking. My eyes darted up to her, shocked by her annoyed tone. Honey, I loved your mum. We all did. I know she meant well, trying to teach you to be strong, since she knew she won't be here to guide you through tough times. But honey, letting yourself be vulnerable isn't always a weakness. Sometimes it can be a conscious decision to draw the other person out. It's okay to be vulnerable with your friends. Uh, but in real life, if you show vulnerability to people who are mean to you, they are going to use it against you. It's ironic this is said at a school, because Penelope, did you not go to school? <laughs> FYI, it's also why you should not visibly cry online if you're receiving hate. Makes things worse. It's like blood to sharks in the water, you know? Yes, you do, my grandma stated flatly. I know how your mother's death affected you. I know you wanted to be a doctor so you can help people that are hurting the way she was with cancer. I know you take her advice to heart and think everything will be better once you go off to college, but Jared's faults aren't the only ones hurting you. Throwing my fork back down on the plate, I wiped the thin layer of sweat off my brow. How did this get turned around on me? Now wait a minute, I'm getting pretty tired of everyone being on his side. He walked away from me, huffing back into my chair, I crossed my arms over my chest, and you let him, Tate. What the hell, Grandma? You're going in a home. Anyway, Grandma is way too involved in Tate's business and needs to mind her own. Early morning and Tate decides to go tree climbing and spies Casey leaving Jared's house. Absolutely not. Why would you later on want to get with someone when you know your best friend has sucked their dick is beyond me? Is this maid in Chelsea? Then Jared spots her in the tree and reminds her sitting in a tree during a thunderstorm isn't smart. Tatum? His voice sounded soft and gentle and I instantly felt warm all over. But then he spoke again. I wouldn't care if you were alive or dead. <laughs> Don't remember asking, but sure. Chapter 17. After my disgusting behaviour in class yesterday and the way I'd gotten sidetracked from my goals, I decided to go up the tough girl act. His game was too hard and I was turning into a person I didn't like. This is what I mean. It's the way that she would not survive five seconds in England if she thought that like that but was bad. Her saying that to him. Like that's a greeting over here. Your parents hate you. Die. <laughs> it's like that. That clip of Doctor Who, where it's like ringing up GP receptionists being like, kill yourself, rid the world of your filth. Yeah. That's just what, like, that's what it's like, ringing the GP, that's what it's like going outside. It's just what it's like in England, all right? Ben invites Tate out, but she refuses. Hannah the bitch. 
any relation to Maddox the slut, walked by us with her crew and they threw me, Ben some sultry looks of you don't even need to buy me dinner variety. Their antics were so transparent. Flipping your hair and biting your bottom lip. Really? Who does that? Okay. Shut up. I guess I should be delighted that a guy like Ben wanted to date me. Hannah and probably most of the other girls in the school would be grateful to have his attention. Pick me. Her jerked his thumb towards the cafeteria. Proofreading anyone. Guys, I'm sitting right here. Talk to me, morons. I barked sarcastic at the both of them. Can you bark sarcastically? Mind boggles. Tate doesn't want to go to the race as she will be forced to spend time with Jared and KC. I know what that means. KC picked up her phone and started scrolling, clearly pissed. She's pissed at me. Screw that. KC. My mood turned as black as my fingernails. Oh yeah, there's lots of references to like emo bands in this. I think like Tate's different because she's meant to be a bit of an emo even though she's never described as such beyond that, but whatever. I'm gatekeeping emo from these MCs. I said I would try, Jesus. I'm just saying, her eyes never leaving her phone, that I think if it weren't for Jared, then you would go. You have to try Tate. He said he won't have a problem with you being there. Is this the shittest best friend I've ever read or what? Casey's voice broke my trance. So if Jared's a dickhead, then what am I for seeing him? A self-centered bitch for even asking that question? Tate is like, he's just using you to get to me and Casey gets offended by the obvious and storms off. She spat out her words before leaving and I let her leave because I understood her disappointment. Right now, I didn't even like myself. This is how buddies are made. My dad always told me that I could say what I needed to say as long as I said it nicely and fuck me for snarling out my words like a five-year-old. You know, many five-year-olds that snarl? Hmm. So Jared and Maddox, right, let me get this straight are allowed to bully Tate to the point of her leaving the country for an entire year. She goes all the way to Europe. She goes to France. I don't think any of these Yanks could point out France on a map, right? And Casey is allowed to see all of this, but still be hooking up with Jared in spite of her best friend hurting. But we're meant to think that Tate is the bad one for expressing her displeasure. BFFR. I'd go as far as saying that this is actually very dehumanizing, that everyone else is allowed to be a piece of shit, but God forbid Tate stand up for herself. Wild. They are reading Catcher in the Rye. Everyone likes the idea of a rebellious teenager who smokes too many cigarettes. This is so American, especially considering they're all meant to be like 17, 18. I don't know why this would be seen as impressive. English kids are smoking and drinking by the age of 13. English kids are vaping by like the age of nine now. It's can't blame them. It's delicious. Weariness wadded my heart. I turned around to look at Jared. His eyes lifted from his notebook and his eyes sharpened on me. I wanted to walk down the hall and know there was no pain around the next corner. I wanted him to stop. And yes, I admitted, I wanted to know him again. After all that, she still wants to be his friend. Remember earlier when she said, men like Jared and Maddox get away with it because women let them? Hypocrite and misogynist rolled up into one pathetic pick me. Tate decides to perform a monologue to Jared because that'll show him. Go on, Shakespeare. Then one day, out of the blue, I lost you too. The hurt returned and I felt sick when I saw you hating me. My rainstorm was gone and you became cruel. There was no explanation. You were just gone and my heart was ripped open. I missed you. I missed my mom. My voice cracked and I didn't wipe away the tear that fell. It's the way that someone would actually end up even more bullied if they did this in front of an entire class of teenagers. Everything still hurts, but I know none of it is my fault. There are a lot of words that I could use to describe you, but the only one that includes sad, angry, miserable, and pitiful is coward. In a year, I'll be gone and you'll be nothing but some washout whose height of existence was in high school. My eyes were still on Jared and my voice got strong again. The ache in my face from trying to hold back tears eased. You are my tempest, my thundercloud, my tree in a downpour. I loved all of those things and I loved you, but now you're a fucking drought. I thought that all the assholes drove German cars, but it turns out that pricks and mustangs can still leave scars. Wow, it's like a pound shop, 10 things I hate about you. Looking around the class, I noticed everyone leaned in and quiet. One girl was tearing up and then everyone claps and cheers, kill me. This is enough to free Tate from Jared's clutches or something. People I'd never spoken to patted me on the back and offered me compliments. Jared drifted out of class like the fuse on a stick of dynamite. Only this time I was free from the explosion. I let him go, not even sparing any effort to make it look like I didn't care. I bared my soul up there and now the ball was in his court. If you're truly free of someone, then there is no ball and there is no court. You should be indifferent to them. She leaves hand in hand with Ben, the bloke that, you know, she's stringing along. Jared. He turned around but didn't reply. I noticed that the whites of his eyes were red. Hands tucked into the front pocket of his black hoodie. He was breathing like he'd just run a mile. Other than that, there was no emotion. He didn't look upset or happy. Nothing. 
what was happening in his head. And would I ever find out? If you're trying to be free of him, why do you care, you dumbass? Chapter 18. The idea of apologising to KC caused my stomach to roll. She was dating a guy that treated me badly and it hurt that she could turn a blind eye to that. But I also realised that she and Jared were using each other. In time, probably sooner rather than later, this fling of theirs would be over. As long as she wasn't teaming up with him to treat me like shit, then I decided not to give him what he wanted. Truly pathetic behaviour. So she apologises to KC. It's like a 500 plus IQ move. You acted like a dick, she mumbled. I almost laughed. Well, she was talking to me at least. I know. He has nothing to do with me anymore. If he's what you want, then I can grow up and get over it. Apology accepted. I could hear the smile in her voice. I don't care about Tate as a protagonist anymore because she is so wet. If Casey was a good friend to her, then she wouldn't actively choose to be banging her best friend's bully. They don't actually bang, but the point still stands. What the hell? Now, if I was lucky, I'd only have to endure minimal meetings with Jared. If I was really unlucky, though, he'd make all of Casey's and my outings into threesomes. Hmm. Is this how bullies are made? I also still felt like slapping my friend a little. But at least I'd let go of my bitterness about Jared. If she wanted to rebound with him, then that was on her. I was tired of making a problem where there wasn't one. And to save myself some stress, I decided to mind my own business. She knew how I felt. And I knew she wouldn't betray my trust. That's all I needed. She has already betrayed your trust, you idiot. Tate hears Madman the dog locked outside in the rain. The last thing I wanted to do was knock on the dickhead's door, but there's no telling what bullshit I'd wake up, wake up to if I took Madman home with me. Jared will probably accuse me of trying to steal his pet. Are you for real? The dog is outside in a storm and she cares more about how it would look if she took Madman home for the evening. She's an absolute moron. I would not think twice. The door is unlocked, so she goes into Jared's house to see where everyone is. The house is completely trashed and Jared is out drinking Jack Daniels in his garden. He's moping about something, so Tate apologises to him for the same words. His mum was recovering alcoholic and hard liquor could be dangerous in large quantities. By the looks of the house, he was not in control of his faculties. Snatching the bottle off the table, I walked to the sink and started dumping the contents down the drain. I'm not letting you hurt yourself either. Son of a bitch, Jared heaved at my back and I shook the bottle nervously when I heard his quick footsteps behind me. Bro smashed up his own house in a temper tantrum, a drunk one, and she wants to stick around and play these games. No sense of self-preservation. This is none your business. Just leave, he growled. His breath fell on my face, smelling of whiskey and rain. That is not pleasant, dude. And his wild eyes made my arms go weak. I almost released the bottle, overwhelmed by the force he used to get it away. As he yanked, my whole body jerked. Well, this is new. The Jared I'd gotten used to walked around calm and collected, but this Jared was desperate and reckless. I should be scared, but for some reason, I was intoxicated with the face off. I wanted this confrontation with Jared. I hungered for it. Have you never seen the statistics of women getting beaten by drunk men? Because this is just stupid. Get a grip, jerk. He'd obviously lost control and I needed to snap him out of this. I let go of the bottle and slapped him across the face. His head twisted to the side with the impact and my hand stung. I'd never hit Jared. Not even when we were kids and playing around. That's uh, one way to do it. Probably not the best idea to slap around a drunk person. Our survey says no, but this ridiculous plot says yes. Stunned and furious, Jared dropped the bottle to the floor, forgotten, and turned his vicious eyes on me. I gasped when he hoisted me off my feet by my waist and slammed me down on the hard edge of the sink. Before I knew it, he had locked my wrists in a hold behind my back and positioned his body between my legs. He pulled me to him, roughly, and I was trapped. My chest rose and fell quickly, desperate for air. Oh God, let me go, I screamed. My body was constricted between his arms in back of me. Huh? My body was constricted between his, between his arms in back of me and his torso in front. Whatever. His grip was tight, enough to keep me still, but not enough to hurt. I tried to twist and wriggle my way free, but he only jerked me harder against him and tightened his hold. Jared, let me go. I tried to make my voice sound forceful, but with the struggle, my strength had dwindled. That is so romantic. Also, I've humbled myself recently, yeah? Because... I've been listening to the Lord of the, Lord of the Rings audiobook narrated by Andy Serkis, aka like an actual actor. And yeah, Audible ain't going to come knocking, are they? They're really not. He, he puts 110% effort into it. He can do so many different accents. I've got one voice. Monotonous. Even with the liquor on his breath, he smelled incredible. I doubt that. Like some kind of body wash. 
Whiskey and rain body wash. Do you think links are missing out on a new fragrance? My thighs were cold where his wet pants rubbed, but the rest of me was on fire. Heat spilled from the pores on my neck. That's another thing as well. I actually have started writing my parody of Fifty Shades of Grey, so don't steal my idea. And I've been reading The Smash Love Deception and my God, it's terrible. So expect that video like in the next few days. But the rest of me was on fire. Heat spilled from the pores on my neck and a drop of sweat glided between my breasts where my chest touched his. Dizziness fogged my head with the pressure he was putting between my legs. Of course she gets horny by all of this. Jared whinges that her monologue hurt him. Never mind all the pain he's caused her. No, I didn't get off on it. I answered calmly. I feel nothing. You are nothing to me. He flinched. Don't say that. The heat from his mouth wafted around me. <sighs> Hot alcohol breath. As I leaned in, nothing. I repeated, barely whisper. Now get off. His mouth crashed down on mine, drowning out my protest. <sighs> They snog until she comes to her senses. He hurt me. He hated me. Jared, stop. My tone was meant to be stronger, but it only sounded desperate. He ignored me. <laughs> it's great. As he kissed and lightly bit my shoulder while his hand moved underneath my shirt. Jared, I said, stop. Putting my hands on his chest, I pushed him away. He stumbled back a few steps, breathing hard and eyeing me like an animal. And then she runs away home, chapter 19. She admits to herself she liked kissing him and then goes on about how hot he is. She goes on a date with Ben, who is trying to work out if the boy from her monologue is Jared, real genius, that one. And then they go to the loop place for the, the race. She sees Casey. We'd made amends, but now I felt uneasy about making out with Jared and their relationship still bugged me. Casey knew what type of guy Jared was, so I don't care if Jared just cheated on Casey. I don't care. Anyway, they hang out with Jared and just the sight of him gets Tate horny and she wishes Ben made her feel that way. His focus was entirely on me, something familiar in his expression. In that moment, the race, Ben and Casey didn't even exist. A tiny moan barely made it out of my throat as my heart sped up and my stomach flip-flopped. Imagine someone standing there moaning at the sight of literally just some bloke. Mm -mm. Chapter 20, Jared raises some guy called Roman. The same girl who set off Maddock, the slut, and Liam came to stand in front of the cars, shaking her ass as she walked in front of their headlights. Ready, little miss, look at me, he called. You know, other women don't have to be the enemy, yeah? There are three modes of women, according to this book. Whores, nuns, and housewives. No other modes exist. As much as I hated to admit it, I was worried. Roman would... <laughs> As much as I hated to admit it, I was worried. Roman would do something shady and hurt Jared. That doesn't have to be two separate sentences, two short sentences. You could just combine that and it could be a longer sentence. Just saying. Even after everything, I didn't want to see him hurt. Weak. Anyway, they tie Roman and Jared, so they start arguing. Roman pointed his finger near Jared's face as he spoke. I'll tell you what, princess. Come back after you've grown some balls and taken off your training wheels. Then you'll be man enough to race me. Cars don't have training wheels also who speaks like this is literally a jack joseph sketch the trampy brunette from jared's party piper walked up okay piper then snogs jared for zero reason so i guess we hate her whatever he'd kiss me like that only two days ago fuck him i peered over at casey whose eyebrows were raised in surprise are you okay i asked did i really care probably not but at least it took my mind off of the ache in my chest. <laughs> Me. Fan-fucking-tastic, she snarled. Liam just saw that. Awesome. I almost laughed, realising that the only thing she was pissed about was Liam's reaction. If Liam didn't think Jared was serious about KC, then he wouldn't feel threatened. This is all terribly juvenile. I know they're 18, but it's still juvenile. The race master, which... That sounds bad out of context. Says it's a tie, but they can rematch, but only if their girlfriends drive their cars to prove who has the better car because women can't drive or something. Why not take it to a little scare electric set instead? Chapter 21. I was sure the laughter at the loop could be heard all the way to the Benson house. Some people cheered at the race master's innovative solution, whilst others bitched about their bets. But everyone seemed to agree that a race by two dim-witted teenage girls in high-performing machines would be hilarious, and you thought I was being facetious about the misogyny in this. They declined at first, but then Jared asked Tate to drive his car. A hand hooked me at the crook of my elbow and gently pulled me to a stop. I looked up to see Jared struggling to meet my eyes. Can I talk to you? His voice was hushed and his demeanour gentle. It had been so long I'd forgotten how human he could be. Though it wasn't enough for me to forget how terrible he'd been either. 
No, I spat out the same flat response he'd given to me weeks ago when I'd asked him to turn down his music. And he took a breath. You know how hard this is for me. He looked away and then back again. I need you, he sighed, sounding defeated. It's just a boring teenage car race. How melodramatic could you be? Then again, this is how the Fast and Furious franchise started out and they ended up in space. I wanted to drive his car badly. I wanted to show all of these people what I was made of. I wanted to show Jared that I was worth something. (laughs) And it was that thought that made me want to walk away. I didn't have to prove anything to him. I knew my worth and I didn't need his approval. Perhaps I conceded, but I do have pride. He's not getting a damn thing from me. Thank you, Jared cut off Casey before she had a chance to respond. For what? I shot back. For reminding me what a disappointing self-serving bitch you are. Jared gritted for his teeth as he got in my face. Heat rose to my head as I started to feel like words weren't enough anymore. He is so one note and boring. Like, get a hobby, Jared. He rolled up his sleeves as if he was going to personally throw us into the car. Jared, you're going to lose a lot of money. And Tate, you think everyone treated you badly before? Two thirds of the people here tonight bet on Jared. When they hear that his first choice turned him down, the rest of your school year will be hell without Jared or me having to lift a finger. Now the both of you get in the goddamn car. Everyone stood there, shocked. Magic the slut never made sense, but he succeeded in making me feel immature and childish. A lot of people were counting on Jared's win. As much as I hated admitting Magic was right, he made a valid point. They are all 17. It's literally not that deep. She forces him to say please, which he does, so she agrees to do it. Turning the key, I backed into position as the crowd departed to the sidelines. The vibration through my thighs made my centre tingle. (laughs) Is she getting horny from the car? What episode of My Strange Addiction is this? My name is Nathaniel, I'm 27 years old, and I'm in a serious relationship with my car. Following his order, I glanced over to my left and saw Roman barking orders at his girlfriend while she nodded nervously. Zach walked between the two cars to take up his position up front. Thankfully, it appeared he would send us on our way instead of the slutty jailbait from before. What did that slutty jailbait ever do to you? Tate notices Jared has a necklace from clay and ribbon hanging in his car and it's a necklace that she made for her mum once and left it at her mum's grave which Jared took so it wouldn't be stolen and he uses it as a good luck charm. Jared tuned the iPod to bullet for my valentine's waking the demon. There's a blast from the past. The race starts. My thighs dampened with sweat grated across the seat. Is it body shaming if I ask why she's sweating so much for the first five seconds of the race? Sweat shaming? Sweat dripped from my brow. Like, are you okay? Wow! Okay! This is awesome. The easy way the gas propelled the car forward felt like a space shuttle. Or so I assumed. I know that Tate has never been in a space shuttle. You you don't need to tell me that she's assuming that's what a space shuttle feels like. Next turn is coming. You need to slow down. Yap, yap, yap. Annoying. She's so annoying in this race. Anyway, Tate wins by being reckless or something, and I don't really know what the point was. When I looked over him, he was leaning against his fist with a finger across his lips. What was he trying to hide? A smile? Why is he purposefully trying to be an arsehole all the time? Literally, what is the point? Even with the reveal at the end that, oh, his dad used to abuse him, used to beat him up, not being flippant, it still makes no sense why he's just trying to hide the fact he's smiling. Before he climbed out, he looked over at me again through hooded lids. Thank you, Tate, he whispered. The hair on my neck stood up, my hands shook. He hadn't called me Tate since we were 14. Not since we were friends. Wow. I don't care. Chapter 22. Everyone is happy that Tate won. But I only won because the other girl had no idea how to drive a manual. Why did I say that? I rocked that race whether or not the twit knew what she was doing. Why do you hate women? Clusters of people stood around the fire or sat on boulders while others circulated. Casey hadn't arrived yet that I could see and I assumed she drove with Jared. I stood there feeling uneasy about my place. I guess I could thank Jared for me being more comfortable around a small group than lots of people. Because of him, I'd never been invited to these things. I shook my head slightly to clear my thoughts. I needed to stop blaming him. It was his fault that I'd been blacklisted in the past, but it wasn't his fault that I'd accepted it. This was on me now. What? (laughs) Jared appears. You're cold. Jared pulled up beside me. Does KC still have your jacket? I sighed, unsure about what was causing my annoyance this time. Maybe it was because every time Jared was around me, the nerves in my body became spring's pulsating heat, whereas Ben made me feel like curling up on the couch to watch American Idol. What's so wrong with that? That's just being comfortable around someone, innit? Jared probably never watched TV. Too mundane of an activity. Not watching TV does not make you more interesting. Christian Grey is proof of that. Also, I found it ridiculous that Jared acted concerned about me being cold when earlier this week he said he didn't care whether I lived or died. (laughs) He'd apologised for nothing and I couldn't forget that. 
she does though it looked like Casey and Liam were on the road to recovery. He cheated on her nonstop for months, breaking her trust, her faith in people, and risking STDs on her. How is this a victory for anyone but the patriarchy? Ben ran his fingers down my hair and combed it behind my ear. My muscles tensed. My invisible three feet of personal space had been breached and I wanted to step away. Why? Why can't I just like this guy? I was frustrated with myself. He seemed decent and goal-oriented. Why wasn't he turning my insides to goo or making me daydream? Get out of life. I didn't want Ben. Plain and simple. I wasn't going to be one of those silly girls in a love triangle romance novel who couldn't choose. Not that I was in a love triangle, but I never understood how a girl can't know whether or not she wants a guy. So quirky and meta and not like those other YA girls. Oh, it was nothing. I was looking for KC and I thought they came together. She gets around, huh? Ben commented more than asked. Well, you did great tonight. The school is going to be talking about it for a while. Looks like I scored the jackpot. Ben hooked an arm around me and led me around the bonfire. The jackpot? What was that supposed to mean? Now is the part where we randomly turn Ben into a villain to justify her not fancying him. Maybe this is how bullies are made. Despite my best hints to Ben that he needed to be home soon, he was on his fourth beer and I knew he wasn't going to be able to drive. I started to wonder how I'd be getting home. So predictable. While I tried to ignore the vibe of Jared's presence, I found myself unable to keep from looking for him. I'd seen him chatting with his friends, and the last time I looked, Piper had had her face buried in his neck. She looked trashy in her short, tight black dress and heels. Unlike Tate, who is effortlessly hot because she's a cool girl. Glancing at my watch, I met Ben on his way back from the keg. Hey, I really need to go now. I have that race tomorrow, I reminded him. Ben's eyebrows raised in surprise. Oh, come on, it's only 11.30. The whining was a shock and I was definitely turned off. Let's just stay for another half an hour. He tried shoving his beer at me as if getting me drunk was the answer, but he ended up swaying to the side and he had to latch onto my arm for support. I can take care of myself, Tate, Ben asserted. If you want to leave now, then you'll have to find another ride. If you want to leave with me, I'll be ready in a while. So Ben ditches her. Ben and his friends were about as interesting as cornflakes. The girls had no other interest besides shopping and makeup. What is wrong with liking shopping and makeup? You disgusting little pick me. I love makeup and I am a hundred times more interesting than anything this book could ever hope. <sighs> Tate has no one to pick her up. So she decides to walk through the woods alone at night to get to the nearest car park to hitch a ride. But she runs into Nate. Who's that? Don't know. I tried to go around him, but his hand shot out to grab my waist and he pulled me to him. My muscles tightened and my hands curled into fists. Shh, Nate implored as I tried to push myself away. His breathing echoed in my ear and he reeked of alcohol. Yet somehow it's like sexy when Jared tastes of whiskey, but okay. Tate, I've wanted you for so long. You know that. How about you put me out of my misery and let me take you home? His nose was in my hair and his hands dropped my ass. I stiffened. So of course Nate is basically a rapist. Of course he is. Nate shook with laughter. Kneading my ass, he whispered, Oh, I know you are tricks. I know you are tricks, Tate. <sighs> Does anyone proofread these? My God. Stop fighting it. I could take you on the ground right now if I wanted to. His lips... <sighs> ugh. His, I just realised what I said. His lips crushed down on mine and the acidic taste of vomit rose in my throat. She bites and pepper sprays him and kicks him in the nuts, which, you know, good for her. Jared turns up, but she doesn't need him to rescue her, which is nice. But you know it's bad when that's a highlight of the book. Jared gives Tate his shirt. I could smell his man scent. I bet he smells a B.O. Jared beats the shit out of Nate and then argues with Tate. You're right, Jared looked to me with disgust, is drunk. Now, unless you'd like to wake up your poor grandmother to come out to the middle of nowhere to get you after your date gets drunk and you almost get raped, which I'm sure will do wonders for your father trusting you to be alone, by the way, then you'll get in the goddamn car, Tate. I love that random victim blaming part there. Nice. Chapter 23. Tate gets in the car with Jared and they argue my problem he raised his eyebrows if i just asked the dumbest question you come to the bonfire of that idiot ben jameson who can't stay sober enough to drive you home and then you traipse off into the woods in the dark and get groped by dietrich maybe you're the one with the problem his voice was low but bitter and spiteful are you actually kidding me right now as i glanced at the speedometer 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 i don't know my eyes bulged when I noticed that Jared was driving over 80 miles per hour. <laughs> Slow down, I ordered. Doesn't want her attacked, but is okay with them both dying in a car crash. 
He ignored my plea and gripped the steering wheel harder. I'm not sure gripping... I've only just started doing driving lessons again, but I'm pretty sure gripping the steering wheel has nothing to do with how fast the car is going. Jared basically says Nate won't retaliate at Tate now that Jared is involved. Like, okay, big man. I felt gravity pull my body towards the other side of the car and my heart thumped wildly when I saw that Jared wasn't slowing down as we rounded the soft turn. You need to slow down. Jared snorted. No, I don't think so, Tate. You wanted the full high school experience, didn't you? Football player boyfriend, casual sex, reckless behaviour. He goaded me with his sarcasm. What was he talking about? I never wanted that stuff. I just wanted to be normal. And then he switched off his headlights. You know full well... If they crashed into someone, a child would die, but Jared would live because that's how life works, apparently. God favours morons. Tate gets really scared and screams at Jared to stop it, but he just doesn't. Stop the car, I screamed, my heart pounding with dread. See, if Andy Serkis was reading, if he was reading this out, he would have recommitted to screaming that. <laughs> Not paid enough to do that. My heart pounding with dread. He was going to kill us. Jared twists his head to face me. You know why you don't like this? Because you're not like them, Tate. You never were. Why do you think I kept everyone away from you? What rubbish is this now? I was breathing as fast as the car was speeding now. I was sure we were going to hit something or flip over. Huh? I was sure. Dot. Full stop. We were going to hit something or flip over. Just combine the sentences. Stop the fucking car. I bellowed with the full force of my lungs. That was clearly the full force of my lungs. Actually, that was the full force of my lungs because I have a crippling addiction to vaping. Not true. I've not vaped in weeks, actually. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the applause. Calm down. Pounding my fists on my thighs before hitting him on the arm. Get back in the... Oh, and then... Right, so she has to, like, scream at him. She's so scared. And then... <laughs> okay, I skipped ahead. And then the car... He does stop and she gets out of the car. Get back in the car. Jarrett's teeth were bared as he growled. Why? Is he, like, a like a wolf or a lion or something? On all levels except physical, I am a wolf. You could have killed us. My throat tightened and I noticed his furious eyes graze over my ripped shirt that had poked out of my button down I was still wearing. Get back in the damn car. He slammed his palm down on the roof, his eyes on fire. Why? I asked, tears threatening. Because you need to go home. He spat out like, duh. Lovely. All of that is lovely. Tate then steals his keys and starts throwing them one by one until Jared gives her an answer on why he keeps people away from her. Now talk. Why do you hate me? Hate you? Jared breathed heavily and shook his head. I never hated you. Didn't he just say he didn't care if she dies? <laughs> he said he spread rumours about her to the boys because he was jealous that they wanted to date her. You're doing fine so far. I want to know why all of this started in the first place. Why did you want to hurt me? The pranks? The blacklisting from parties? This wasn't about other guys. What was your problem with me? I accused him. His cheeks puffed out as he sighed. Because you were there. Because I couldn't hurt who I wanted to hurt. So I hurt you. Tate, I had a shitty summer with my dad that year. His voice sounded closer. When I came back, I wasn't the same kid. Not even close. I wanted to hate everybody. But with you, I still needed you in a way. I needed you to not forget me. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Jared's voice never cracked, but I could tell there was remorse in his tone. Go to therapy, you big freak. She says, so you bullied me for no reason. And he says, I loved you the first moment I saw you. Like, okay, dude, cheers, good one. When you recited your monologue this week, I, he drifted off with a sigh. I knew then that I'd really gotten to you. And instead of feeling any satisfaction, I was angry with myself. But I, I wanted to hate you all these years. I wanted to hate someone, but I didn't want to hurt you. And I didn't really realise that until the monologue. So he was mean to her for years, just because he could be, because he felt like it. But he didn't actually want to hurt her. And this is the bloke so many people are swooning over on Goodreads. Behave. You don't want to talk anymore? I spit out, not quite believing what I heard. Well, I do. And I twisted around to launch another key in the air, but Jared's arms darted out and circled around my body, trapping me from behind. Male love interest or pro wrestler? Por que no dos? Por que no los dos? He let go of me and I stepped forward before turning to face him. You don't hate me, he asserted. If you did, you wouldn't be this upset. <sighs> The next thing I knew, my feet were being swept off the ground and I was upside down. <laughs> he is a pro wrestler. Jared had tossed me over his shoulder and all the air left my body as his shoulder bone dug into my stomach. Put me down. The heat of anger was like a blazing fire covering my skin. I kicked my feet and punched his back, but he simply held me tightly by the backs of my knees. As if following orders, Jared swung me back upright where I landed in a sitting position on the hood of his car. 
It was still warm under my thighs from when it had been driving, but the heat was not a welcoming comfort, since I was already burning with fury. Jared leaned in slowly, probably afraid I'd hit him, and placed his hands on either side of me. His legs stood between mine, and I immediately flushed with the memory of the last time we were in this position. Don't try to get away, he warned. As you remember, I can keep you here. What is all of this? What is all of this? He leaned in closer, his black brown eyes making my body want to do things my brain knew it shouldn't. <sighs> Behave. I could smell his cinnamon breath. Is this what man scent is? He then moves his mouth all over her face to tempt her into kissing him. I want to touch you. His words were against my lips now. I want to feel what's mine, what's always been mine. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. Those words shouldn't tell me on, but holy hell, they did. Anyway, she doesn't given to him even with the old cinnamon breath chapter 24 my eyes flutter open with the sudden chill i'm in bed but a draft caresses my body are my french doors open why is this like when mr smithers dreams of mr burns flying through the window she has a wet dream that he dry humps her into submission I hadn't been properly kissed in months, not since the few dates I'd had in France. Jared had gotten under my skin last night, but no matter how he turned on he got me, I had to remember that he was off limits. Apologising for treating me like dirt wasn't enough. I didn't trust him, and I never would. Not without the whole story. He also had too much control over my body, and that had to change. This is such a non-story, and also, he had too much control over my body. That's embarrassing for her. There's some stuff about exercise and honestly it is as thrilling as you'd imagine. Second only to actually doing some exercise myself. So let's skip it. She texts Casey. So you and Liam? I queried. Part of me hoped that she and Liam were back on. I felt guilty. Only a lousy person would kiss the guy her best friend was dating. And I worried about how I would tell her. If she and Liam were back together, then maybe I wouldn't need to come clean. Don't judge. She texted back. Really flooded me. They were back together. Never. If you're happy... I am. Just hope I can trust him. She still had doubts, and rightly so. I don't think I could take back a guy that cheated on me. But then again, I'd never been in love. I guess I wouldn't know anything until I'd experienced it. You may never know for sure, but as long as he's worth it, I wrote. There is not a universe that exists throughout the multiverse in which mid-men who shag other people just because they can are worth it. Also, if you're in love with someone, then you try to not hurt that person. So I'm not sure where cheating fits in with that description can't even use the excuse that they've been together for decades <laughs> they're 17 i think so so jared's all yours what the thumping in my chest actually hurt apparently i took too long drowning in my own sweat because she texted again no worries tate he was never mine anyway <sighs> and this is after they've been doing stuff it's like an episode of me and chelsea jared was like the fourth of july all over my body patriotic and loud terrifying for small animals what she goes to school and speaks to maddock the slut well it's nice to see you too he seemed to hold back his usual sinister self he wasn't making innuendos or trying to grope me well there's an improvement maddock says sorry to tate for bullying her and asks her out to the homecoming dance chapter 25 tate thinks it's a prank by jared Tate, Jared would probably set a fire to my hair if he knew I was here talking to you, let alone asking you out. I'm being serious here. No pranks, no jokes. I really want to take you to the dance. She is just that beautiful that he would risk the wrath of his insane best friend. I whirled around to face him hot with anger. Even if you are being serious, did you really think I'd ever trust you? You've groped me and I've broken your nose. You're asking me out. Really? This was the dumbest turn of events I'd never anticipated. And what's more, it was a waste of my time. I realise we have an interesting history, Maddox started, holding up his hands. I wanted to assure you that I'm not asking you out in a romantic way. Jared will have my balls as it is. I've been a jerk and I want to make amends. If you don't already have a date, I'd love to take you and show you that I can be a good guy. Ah, <sighs> I'm tired. She then considers it just to make Jared jealous and goes to class. Casey and Liam had joined us for lunch, but it disappeared for a while ago, probably underneath the bleachers near the football field to talk. She seemed happy, and Liam had been even sweeter than usual. It would be a long time before I could look at him without thinking about his betrayal, but I was glad they were together again. But why? Tatum Brandt. I jumped, instantly embarrassed that the person yelling made me the focus of the entire lunchroom. Will you please go to the homecoming dance with me? The idiot's voice asked behind me. Maddock asked her out like this because no man in fiction can ever be normal. Please, let's make this work. I'm sorry for everything. He was deliberately speaking above the laughter so that everyone knew our business. I said no. But the baby needs a father, he implored. See. 
Anyway, this causes her to say yes so he doesn't embarrass her anymore. Chapter 26. And everyone knows that it's just a joke, so it's fine. I was going to homecoming with the one person in the school who made my skin crawl. I was getting attention from a gorgeous star football player that I couldn't care less about. And I was having wet dreams about a potential sociopath who acted like he was he hated me most of the time. Well, when she puts it all like that, it is quite the predicament she has found herself in. Hi, Tate. Dr. Porter was a middle-aged ex-hippie who often left his long, rust-coloured hair flowing free and drops of coffee dangling from his scraggy beard and moustache. Huh? <laughs> Anyway, she does some sort of after-school revision in an empty classroom, but Jared magically appears. It's like some type of crossover with the House of Night. He leaned back in the chair with his hands behind his head and one foot propped up on the edge of the table. All teachers are punching the air and screaming right now. Jared insists he's there so they can become friends again. The idea of having Jared for a sleepover, even though he was joking, thrilled me. Damn, I'd love to let him keep me up all night doing things that we sure didn't do as kids. I wanted his hands on me, bringing me close, and his mouth all over. But I wanted him to care, too. And I didn't trust him. Oh my god, who cares? You know, maybe too much damage has been done. I know you've apologised, but it's not so easy for me. You're not getting girly on me, are you? He sneered. Yeah, not accepting psychological abuse as girly or something. (laughs) I forgot your birthday was coming up, he said almost to himself, as I took back the papers and stuffed everything in my binder. I wondered if that was true. Our birthdays were a big deal when we were friends, but in recent years he could have forgotten, I guess. I hadn't forgotten his. It was October 2nd. Yesterday. Ugh, should I say something? I hadn't done anything for Jared's birthday the past few years, but now the subject was up, I had no idea what to do. Screw it, he would have forgotten mine too. Who cares? The whiplash I'm getting from the constant changes. Like, pick a lane. Like him or don't like him, but stop this nonsense. Does your mum know you provide alcohol to minors and sleep around on the weekends? My remark came out way snippier than I wanted to. Does my mum care be a better question? His sarcasm was a cover for the annoyed look I saw boiling underneath. I frowned as I thought about Jared's life. He grew up without a father and an absentee mother. He had no healthy role models or love in his life that I knew of anyway double who cares I'd be so much more lenient if he at least used his trauma to become funny or something but no he's just mean and boring at least be mean and funny Jared makes Tate so nervous she keeps knocking things over which considering they're in a science lab is great hope she knocks over something radioactive and they both get poisoned he apologizes for being a bully again and then snogs her He clutched me tighter, pulling me up to my toes. I inhaled him, smelling the wind and rain from his skin, and for a brief moment, I was home. (sighs) This is everything I needed, everything I wanted. There is a whole universe out there to explore, but stupid sex and love is all the boring people care about. I've wanted you for so long, he whispered. His breath on my lips was like a drug drawing me in. All the times I'd see you next door, it drove me crazy. My toes curled at his words. He wanted me the whole time. I liked knowing that. I like that he desired me, self-esteem, non-existent. I loved finding out that he never hated me, that he always wanted me, but was ha- what was happening between us? Were we getting together? Or was Jared just scratching an itch? Don't, I gasped out and pulled myself back. I didn't want to move. I didn't want to be anywhere else but with him, but I knew why I stopped. He can't win. He can't treat me like shit and then have me make your mind up. Releasing his hold and dropping me back to my feet, his expression became indifferent as he backed away. Then I won't, he said coldly. I guess I didn't expect him to argue or pursue me more. Jared wasn't a beggar, but I was thrown off balance by how quickly he could go from blazing hot to bitterly cold. That sounds very normal. He let out a dry laugh. I want us to be friends, he admitted somewhat sincerely. Why now? Why so many questions, he countered. Was he serious? He had some explaining to do. You didn't think it was going to be this easy, did you? Yes, I was hoping we could move forward without looking back. That is some typical male entitlement, isn't it? He then gives her grief about the Maddox school dance thing. I don't have to explain myself to you. My response was pathetic. Which, totally valid, but clearly the author doesn't think so. It's like Tate lives in the upside down, which would actually make this whole story make more sense. Has he been on your mind, Tate? His breath fanned my hair. Placing both hands on either side of me, locking me in. (laughs) (laughs) great anyway tate says again unless you tell me everything then no you can't have me then piper appears piper i barely know her (sighs) i looked up to see piper with her cheerleading skirt pulled down to show off her hip bones and flat stomach i think i just vomited a little in my mouth earlier in this chapter tate said her top and jeans leave skin showing so hypocrite listen 
The tie scratched at my back in the small sliver of space where my jeans and top failed to cover my skin. See, hypocrite. So, Terence, the idiot girl acted like she didn't know my name. You didn't go and give your homecoming date a black eye, did you? He can barely see. You should really stop beating up on guys or people will start thinking that you're a... Don't know if I could say that word. So Piper is just stereotypically awful, which is great. But Jared was the one who punched Maddox because he asked Tate out, which is double great. Chapter 27. She calls her dad and eats a Hot Pocket. It's food. Now be quiet. I commanded comically. Uh, the real knee slapper that one casey was smart and even though i liked liam i didn't want her to get hurt again if he cheated once he might do it again i'm not sure how cheating multiple times qualifies as cheating once but maths was never my strong suit i love him and i believe he's sorry do i trust him of course not and he knows it that sounds like the basis for a healthy and happy relationship casey admits that she never slept with jared Grinning and looking at me out of the corner of her eye, she walked to the door and grabbed her jacket off my bed. See you later, hot mama. Sorry, what? The next day, Piper is all, Jared is mine, back off. Keep him. She stuck her hands in the back pockets of her jeans, pushing her D cup chest further in my face. Why? Huh? Taken in her look, I felt insecure. She was sexy in her skin-tight jeans and red halter top shirt. My look screamed goody-goody in my tight but not too tight jeans and black peasant blouse. Don't know what that is. Is this some sort of peasant joke that I'm too rich to understand? She was stylishly adorned with silver bracelets and high-heeled sandals. Really? Sandals in October? My wrists were covered in rubber bracelets. I wouldn't change for any guy, but I could see why guys found girls like her attractive. <sighs> Yeah, except half the school fancies Tate, so. He's yours, I asked calmly, remembering Jared and my two almost free kisses. Does he know that? Her expression faltered, but she quickly recovered. Jared's a bad boy. Who said that? He is what he is, and I can handle that. But if you come after him, you'll have to deal with me. Ew. Then Piper is like, well, I know where he is on weekends. Like, okay, who cares? And Tate decides to break into Jared's bedroom to find it out for herself. I had COVID whilst I was writing the script and it the story made it worse by far. Chapter 28. She waits for Jared to leave before breaking into his room. My bare feet got rug burned. I climbed out the doors and through the tree using my bare feet to clutch the branches. Why? What? Bleh. Anyway, she rummages through his stuff to find who knows. There was a legal document from Jared's grandfather. He'd left Jared a lake house in Wisconsin. A, a piece of shit from the looks of the pictures too. Okay, rude. She finds a folder, but before she can open it, she hears Jared come home and hides in his room, then decides to reveal herself because he's just in a towel. He's all, why are you here? So she distracts him by kissing him. He kept kissing me while I'm buttoning my jeans. I could feel through his towel that he was ready. Was I? I wanted Jared so much. I just wanted to give in and let it happen. I don't think she's ever seen a penis, but she wants to jump straight into having sex. Sure. Jared, I breathed out trying to get control of myself. Don't stop me, Tate. Please, baby. Don't stop me. <laughs> I closed my eyes. I tried to put up a fight, didn't I? It was okay to surrender now. <laughs> the moist trail from his mouth. Lovely. He cocked his head to the side, figuring out something in his head. You're a virgin, he stated quietly. Yep, I guess I made it kind of obvious now. But before I could feel self-conscious about my lack of experience, he kissed my inner flies, sending me reeling again. You have no idea how happy that makes me. And then he does that. All of these books are the fucking same. Virgin girl, promiscuous dude. They view taking a virginity as a gift because they want a pure girl when they aren't, you know, quotation marks, pure themselves. This is truly how bullies are made. Also, all of these types of books are written by women. Like, what is that about? <laughs> he gives her an orgasm and then they're interrupted by some bloke asking Jared where he is because they have a race to go to. Tate decides to go with him, but before she leaves, she finds a photograph on the floor uh, of Jared as a child heavily bruised. It's finally the trauma dumping we've been waiting for. Chapter 29. She takes the picture with her to the race. Hey, he spoke softly and I turned to look at him. I like to keep my head in the game here. If I don't act very friendly, it has nothing to do with you, okay? Translation, I don't do the girlfriend thing, especially in public. Not that Jared and I were together, but I knew what he was trying to say. I shrugged my shoulders. You don't have to hold my hand. And I stepped out of the car. It bugged me that Jared kept up an image. 
Give it a rest. Give it a rest, babe. Walking to the front of the crowd, I picked up whispers and sideway glances directed at me. What's Jared doing with her? And maybe she's racing was some of what I heard. Get a life. Anyway, Ben appears and he doesn't say sorry, but he also doesn't want her anymore. So Tate doesn't care. Like, okay, whatever. But Jared sees them talking and then gets all angry and macho about it. And then Piper goes to flirt with Jared. Do any of these kids ever do their homework? (laughs) Rounding Jared's car, I came up to Piper and grabbed her by the hair. I forced her away from his window and pushed her ahead of me. You bitch, she snarled. What the fuck is your problem? But she didn't wait for my answer. Instead, she charged me in her high heels and I almost laughed. As she stomped up to me, I swept her foot out from underneath her and she fell to the ground. This is like every high school film you've ever seen. They're all much older than they should be and they never do any work. It's just a watered down version of Grease with no musical numbers. Then Jared and Tate kiss so everyone knows that they're a thing. And after the race, they go home. Part of me was scared. We'd almost had sex earlier, and if Sam hadn't interrupted us, we probably would have. Did I want to be with Jared? I only had to think about it for a second before I knew the answer was yes. But was he ready to be with me? Probably a conversation to have before you lose your virginity to this doofus. Then again, YOLO. So she starts asking him about where he goes on weekends. His eyebrows crease with annoyance. What does that matter? He turned onto our street and hit the gas way harder than he needed to. My head nearly hit the roof with how roughly he drove over the dip leading to his driveway. Brilliant. So he gets mad at her and he doesn't answer her. Trust, I spat out. You lost mine a long time ago. But if you try trusting me, then maybe we can be friends again. Or more, I hoped. He pinned me with disdain. I think we've moved beyond friends, Tate. But if you want to play that game, then fine. We can have a sleepover, but there will be fucking involved. (sighs) Is There Will Be Fucking, the porn version of There Will Be Blood. She shoves the picture of him at him and runs away crying. Had I really been ready to give him my virginity a couple of hours ago? Give him my virginity. And yet you never hear boys talk like this about their virginities. Boys lose their virginities. Whereas girls give them. Boys lose them. Quite careless, really. She vows that he doesn't deserve her. It doesn't last long. Chapter 30. This book is so dull. It's making me miss the chaos of House of Nights. I already started the script for book nine. It's Tate's birthday. I love birthdays. It's the only time I let myself eat cake. Casey mumbled for a mouthful of the mint chocolate chip ice cream cake she'd bought me. I can't live like that. My fork dug into the icy sweetness. I'd go nuts counting calories. You don't have to count calories, Tate. Maybe if I started running. Well, Tate is not like the other girls because she doesn't have to count calories. Shut up. God, she said like, this is like a pick me playbook. It's so embarrassing. So since their fight the previous day, she hasn't spoken to Jared, but she goes home and... I couldn't control the smile that spread across my face. The tree was decorated with an assortment of radiant lighting. White lights, small and big bulbs, as well as lanterns of different styles and sizes adorned the tree. The awe-inspiring magical quality of the world within the branches was too intense for words. I was sure I would never enjoy looking at this tree without lights again. Jared, my lips began to quiver. As I walked closer to the tree, I understood... Why so many people were hanging around outside now. The sight was beautiful. I spent a lot of time climbing this tree, reading in it and talking with Jared in it until the stars faded with morning's light. He'd done this for me. I didn't know who else it could have been. This was our special place, one of many, and he lit it up with magic and wonder. Man strings up a few fairy lights and is now boyfriend of the year. Tate cries over this, obviously. Noticing something stuck to the tree trunk, I walked away from my dispersing neighbours and ripped the sheet of paper from its staple. Yesterday lasts forever. Tomorrow comes never. Until you. <sighs> Tate gets rid of Casey to find Jared in his in her room with the folder. Jared discovered that he had a secret brother at his dad's that one summer and his dad had house parties with people doing drugs and the same people sexually abused his brother and his dad beat his brother up. His dad also got them to help rob places as if he wasn't already a massive piece of shit. So overboard. His dad also started beating him up too, so he ran back home without his brother. Chapter 31. Jared's mum made him go to the police and his brother got put into foster care. When Tate left for France, Jared went crazy, got drunk, found out his brother's former foster family had hit him and then put the foster dad in hospital. So a judge decided to force Jared to visit his dad in prison every weekend as punishment. And I am not sure that is something that would happen unless the judge was Judge Judy. His brother is fine and might come to live with him soon. 
I don't know about that. The mum's pretty absent, isn't she? But why did Jared bully Tate? Finally, we find out the answer to the question. He ran a hand through his hair and inched away from me to lean on the railing. When I finally got home that summer, you're my first thought. Well, other than what I could do to help Jax, I had to see you. My mum could go to hell. All I wanted was you. I loved you. He gripped the railing at his side and his body went rigid. I went to your house, but your grandma said you were out. She tried to get me to stay. I think she saw that I didn't look right, but I ran off to find you anyway. After a while, I found myself at a fish pond in the park. He raised his eyes to meet mine. And there you were, with your dad and my mum playing the little family. Wow, what a crime. Tate, you didn't do anything wrong. I know that now. <laughs> you, you just have to understand my mindset. I'd been through hell. I was weak and hurting from the abuse. I was hungry. I'd been betrayed by the person I was supposed to be able to count on. My mum, who didn't help when I needed her. My dad, who hurt me, and my helpless brother. And then I saw you with our parents, looking like the happy, sweet family. While Jackson and I were in pain and struggling to make it through every day in one piece, you got to see the mother that I never had. Your dad took you on picnics and for ice cream while mine was whipping me. I felt like no one wanted me and that life had moved on without me. No one cared. So he basically tortured her for nothing. Like, her mum's dead. She's got her own issues too. But she didn't torture him over it. It's like, sure, it's one thing to admit all of this and ask for forgiveness. Like, that's fine. But for the girl, aka the victim, to then want to get with the guy, despite knowing he's just one bad mood away from treating her like shit again. Ha. Huh. I shook my head. I don't hate you. I mean, I'm a little pissed, but mostly I just hate the waste of time. He wrapped his arms around my waist and pulled me close. You said you loved me. I hate that we lost that, I said sadly. Pathetic. That's why I was such an asshole and kept the guys away from you. You were always mine. Are you mine? I asked as I wiped my tears. He kissed the corners of my mouth softly and I felt heat rise up my neck. Always have been, he whispered against my mouth. Oh yeah, how many girls has he shagged then, as well as getting with her best friend? My body relaxed into him, knowing without a doubt that we had crossed over. He wouldn't hurt me again. <laughs> Sure. My embarrassment at his hands seemed like small potatoes compared to that. But I also knew that his trauma wasn't an excuse to treat me badly all those years. It's like the book is trying to say the right things, but failing. They fall asleep and Tate is woken by a thunderstorm and goes outside to get wet. Who knows? Heading out to the back door from the kitchen, I stepped onto the porch with my bare feet. The awning protected me from getting wet, so I walked down the steps and onto the brick patio. Drops of water fell on my feet, spilling between my toes. Every single author has a foot fetish, and I have no idea why. Jared appears. His teeth were slightly bared as he breathed. <sighs> Looks stupid. They have sex. It's whatever. He leaned down and kissed my lips after our bodies had calmed down. You were really a virgin. He wasn't asking. Yeah, I replied weakly. I haven't had much of a dating life, you know? Rising up to hover over me, Jared kissed me on the cheeks and forehead. So you're truly mine. And by that same logic, Jared is not truly Tate's. Chapter 32, why won't this end? Tate is going to homecoming with both Jar Jared and Maddock for reasons. If he was Jared's best friend, then it was no skin off my nose to give him another chance. Just one more chance. Sure, what's a hundred chances already? Who cares? It's not you I'm worried about, my dad grumbled. I narrowed my eyes. But you like Jared, dad. He's a teenage guy, honey. I trust him, just not with my daughter. Haven't you been away from home for like a year? Whereas Jared had the movie star look, Maddox was pretty like a model. Too pretty for my taste, but pretty all the same. Yeah, right. I'm sorry for being an arsehole all these years. I did have a plan though. Puzzled, I asked which was. He smiled to himself. Jared's my best friend. I've known for a while that he cared about you. The first time I came over to his house freshman year, I found a stash of pictures of the two of you. He keeps them in his nightstand. I messed with you more than he asked me to because I wanted him to react. He's never been a particularly happy guy and I was sick of his brooding. He went ballistic after you left for France and I figured out that his destructive behaviour had something to do with you. Like he was lost without you or something. So I decided to try and make him jealous when you got back to see what happened. What a load of crap. This bloke groped her. Behave. Chapter 33. They go to the dance and then go to an after party. We arrived at Tori's after party just as most people were getting there and I stopped as soon as I stepped inside. The memory of the last time I was here over a year ago got my heart racing. Damn it. Jared halted in front of me probably because I hesitated. My breathing quickened and I clenched his hand. Even in my head I couldn't piece together while I was reacting this way. 
I wasn't scared. I knew nothing was going to happen tonight. Love being with a dude who is the reason for my anxious flashbacks. Take down some alcohol to deal with her feelings. Hey guys, Casey bounced into the kitchen, pulling Liam behind her. He nodded to Maddock and Jared, clearly not happy with Jared and Casey briefly dating. Liam cheated, but he was acting upset because Casey spent a couple of dates with another guy. Thank you for the needless plot summary. How stupid do you think we are? We can read. There's some soppy crap about Jared's tattoos. I don't care. They go to a private bedroom. Boo, go to a public one. Jared, I whispered and wrapped an arm around his neck, placing my lips to his. I really am a good girl, but tonight I want to be really, really bad. Jared, from what I'd seen, was a one-nighter kind of guy. Yeah, but a girl doing that would be a slut, right? I wanted to be bold, even though my nerves wanted me to run for the hills. I wanted to experience everything with Jared. No hiding, no fear. I was going to ask for everything I wanted and be brave about it, forever or never. His shirt dropped to the floor, followed by his pants. Be bold. I put my hand on the swollen proof that he wanted me. He jerked and sucked in a breath while I wrapped my hand around him and stroked. That whole be bold spiel was just so she could give him a hand job. <laughs> be brave. My turn, I whispered in his ear. Jared's eyes widened when he realised what I meant. And then she pegs him. Lol, joke. She just goes on top. Wow, such bravery. Isis is quaking. Jared put a hand on my breast and used his other hand to guide my hips as he worked him as... What? Jared put a hand on my breast and used his other hand to guide my hips as worked him slowly. Oh, for goodness sake, tell me you like it, Tate. He pushed his hips up and hard against me, sending shudders through my body. Say it. Okay, Christian Grey, calm down. Jared is 18. Why is he acting like he's had more experience than a few pathetic teenage fumbles? Of course, he likes Jared. Who? I was 18. My dad knew me having a sex life was bound to happen sooner or later. 18? In England, we call that being a late bloomer. <laughs> Post-coitus. Tate asked Jared why Piper knew about his weekends away. Which is perfect pillow talk, I guess. Tate, I didn't tell Piper anything. Her dad is a cop. The cop that arrested me last year for attacking Jax's foster dad. She found out through him. He circled his arms around my waist and held me close. So you just happened to be dating the daughter of the cop that arrested you. I knew it was more than a coincidence without him saying anything. He sought out Piper for some silly revenge. Bagging the cop's daughter was a screw you to her father. What a lovely, lovely boy. He shrugged. Yeah, I'm not proud of that. But would it make you feel better if I actually liked her? I looked away. No. No, it wouldn't. Which is better, using a woman as a fleshlight or just having feelings for her? Who knows? Chapter 34. Tate is happy, so at least that makes one of us. But then Jared texts her schoolmates a video of her and Jared having sex at the after party. I couldn't stop the tremors rocking through my fingers. I glanced back down to my phone and backed out of the video. The text accompanying the message said, she was a great fuck, who wants her next? My chest shook with dry sobs. Jared, the message came from his phone. It was sent to everyone. <laughs> anyway, Take then takes a crowbar to Jared's car. Very Beyonce of her. Hitting him where it hurt made me feel safe. No one could really hurt me if I could hurt them, right? This is how bullies are made, a voice in my head whispered. No, this is how cars are destroyed. What is it with this book and not letting women react to anything other than being stiff upper-lipped martyrs? Tate, Jared said timidly, eyeing the weapon in my hand. Stay away from me or be more than your car again busted up for next time, I warned. I didn't know if it was my words or the flat tone that surprised him, but he hesitated. He stared at me like I was someone he didn't know. Let me guess, someone slash Piper took Jared's phone to send that video around and once the truth is revealed, it'll be all, how could you not trust me, Tate? Ugh, women. Chapter 35. Once I jumped in my truck and sped off, my phone started lighting up with calls and texts. Casey dialed every 30 seconds and I got nothing from Jared, boyfriend of the year. Tate is now getting propositioned by random guys for a shag. Tate goes to her mum's grave for some alone time and then Jared shows up to bother her some more. Anyway, Jared said that someone stole his phone and he never recorded a video of them together. I called your dad because he was going to find out anyway. That goddamn video is out there. I wanted him to hear it from me first. He's coming home. That's all kinds of humiliating. Also, Jared's mum installed a tracking app on his phone and Tate knows this. So she rings his mum to find his phone. Chapter 36, his phone is at the school. Well, the video was sent this morning. If what you say is true, then whoever used your phone has probably charged it since Saturday night. If what I say is true, he repeated what I said in a whisper like he was aggravated I didn't trust him. Mm, drama. Wasn't it a little too far-fetched that this was all put together without Jared's help? 
far-fetched that anyone would be this obsessed with Jared, but also they are all teenagers, so I'll allow it. She tracks down the phone to Piper's locker. Duh. Uh, all right, she gritted out. Piper appears. Nate took me to homecoming and then to Tori's party afterwards. When we saw you and Jared head upstairs, Nate took his camera phone and climbed into the balcony. When he showed me the video later, I saw that Jared had left his phone on the dresser, so I snuck back in the room to take it. The video came from Nate's phone. It was transferred to Jared's before it was texted. I spoke to Piper, but my eyes were on Jared. He looked at me, not angry like he should have been, but relieved. Now I knew he wouldn't do something like that to me. I should have always known, I guess. When I'm right, I'm right. They show their classmates the truth. We're done, she snapped and waved her hand to shoo me away. You may go. Um, yeah? No. Piper, do yourself a favour and get some help. Jared is not yours and he never will be. In fact, he won't ever look at you again and see anything good, even if he saw anything good in the first place. All of this over some dusty, boring boy. Piper and Tate then have a short-lived fist fight. They get interrupted by a teacher and all the students cover for Jared's benefit, not for Tate's. This is hardly progression. It's your fault, you know. What? Jared asked, his breath hot in my ear. You made me mean. And now I pummel poor defenseless girls and guys. I tried to make my voice sound accusing and innocent. Jared gripped me tighter. You might say that I turned metal into steel. <laughs> I buried my nose in his hair, kissing the ridge of his ear and joked, whatever helps you sleep at night, you big bully. And that's why bullying is okay. Chapter 37. Tate's, <laughs> why is it still going? Tate's dad has returned and everything's fine. But he admitted he probably won't be comfortable with anyone at any time dating his only daughter. Pathetic and emotional incest pilled. Jared and I had been online constantly taking down the video whenever we found it. Our classmates also seem to be laying off the gossip, but I was sure it had more to do with their respect for Jared than their sense of decency. Well, thank God Tate has the protection of a man then. Open it, he urged gently. I sat up and he leaned back on his feet watching me. Sliding the lid off, I pulled out a charm bracelet. Not the clunky, jiggling kind that made lots of noise, but a dainty silver chain holding four charms. My eyes darted up to Jared, but he just sat silently, waiting for something. I and the bracelet closer. I saw the charms were of a cell phone, a key, a coin, and a heart. Literally a poor man's version of the bracelet that Christian got Anna. My lifelines, I burst out, it finally hitting me. Jared exhaled a laugh. Yeah, when you told me on our way to Chicago about how you always wanted your escape plans when dealing with me in the past, I didn't want you to see me that way anymore. Crazy that she needed escape plans from her now boyfriend. I was his and he was mine. We had never gone from each other. Both of us were shaping the other, even though we didn't realise it. And now we were complete. Something, something, everyone should just have sex with their bullies and it'll be happily ever after the end. Good God, no, it's not. There is a preview of this same book, but told from Jared's perspective. Why are all authors doing this? Please stop. And it is truly abysmal. I dug my fist into the hard tiled wall across from Penley's classroom. Fuck her. Fuck Tate and her pathetic whining. But even saying those words, I still wasn't calming down. Fuck. Who did she think she was anyway? Acting like she was the victim? Really? I pressed my forehead to the cool wall and closed my eyes. What has she just done to me in there? I'd gone stone cold as soon as that monologue started. I knew she was talking about us right off the bat and I couldn't tear my eyes away from her. She still remembered when I was good to her and from the sound of it, she still missed me. Why? God damn it, Tate. Don't do this. Don't mess with my head. All I wanted when I was 14 was her and she wasn't thinking about me when I was screaming for her. She didn't need me. She didn't miss me while I was away. Life went on, didn't it? I needed her so goddamn much that day and she wasn't giving me one fucking thought. She was happier without me. Why do all bad authors go, hmm, here's how to make the narrative sound like a man. Have them swear a lot. Piper was the last thing on my mind these days and I'd wish she'd taken the hint and back off. But then I remembered she was good for one thing. Don't talk. I spun around and grabbed her hand without even looking at her and dragged her to the nearest bathroom. I needed to burn off frustration and Piper knew the score. She was like water. She assumed the shape of whatever container held her. She didn't challenge me or make demands. She was just there for the taking. Insane that this is the same misogynist so many girls are swooning over. The end. For real. What do you guys think of this? Is it as like insanely offensive? It's like a Fifty Shades Light in a way. You know, and it's not like as crazily offensive as the House of Night series and boy, that's why we love it, right? It's just like blah. The whole thing's just blah and rubbish. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, for listening. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Make new videos whenever I feel like it. Check out my memberships and check out my Instagram. And I'll see you guys later. See you guys next time. Not later. Don't come to my house. Bye.